Smith, and you know what time it is. It's time for the top 10 most intriguing games in East Texas. Uh, if you're new to this show, this is what we do every week. We check out the best 10 games for the week for tonight, Friday, nice games. But before we do any of that, we get into week eight and we talk about the best 10 plays and players of week eight. So at number 10, we're going Connor Cuff here from Carthage. It is the uh, first time he's been on the list in a while here. He went 8 of 13 for 229, four touchdowns, and a big 49-0 win over Rusk. I thought this game would have been a little bit more competitive, but Carthage came out to play, and thanks for a highly efficient offense in Carthage. Uh, Connor Cuff leads the way against Rusk in a, uh, in a shellacking 49-0 win over the Rusk Eagles. At number 9, it's Imante Cross from center. He went 11 of 18 for 276 yards, five touchdowns. Also had four carries for 37 yards. Just a center has just been incredible on offense all year. They have receivers that can make plays after they catch the ball. Cross is uh, another guy that's very uh, explosive as well. And so center has just played lights out on offense all year long. And they went in and took it to Van 63-24. to Four loss and the defensive tackle came up with three huge sacks against North Mesquite. Uh, Longview did play really well up front defensively, played a lot of games up front, and Billy was one of the beneficiaries of those games that they played up front, coming up with three huge sacks against North Mesquite past Friday. At number seven, who we got? At number seven, we've got Ivan Lacey of White House. The big running back went 22 carries, 178 yards, and two touchdowns in a 56-42 to win over Halswell. Typically, you know, the guy that's, that, that runs the ball a lot for them is the quarterback and Josh Green, but Ivan Lacey had just had a day being very physical, running the ball in between the tackles and taking it to the Bobcats for a huge district win. At number six is Aaron Hampton of Dangerfield. Six catches, 142 yards, two touchdowns, a 67-yard punt return touchdown, and a 54-6 to win over Elysian Fields. He's just one of those athletes. He's committed to Texas, and he just dominates the competition every single week week in and week out him and chase johnson have just been explosive for dangerfield as they debuted new numbers this week uh as chase pulled out the zero and aaron hampton went to number one so that was a pretty cool thing to see right there at number five it's the quarterback it's chase johnson uh 15 of 25 329 yards and five touchdowns and that big blowout win uh, Chase has just been incredible this year. He got a chance to play last year as a freshman in the playoffs when D. Lewis went down. And uh, Chase has just built upon that experience and just came out flinging the ball all over the field. He's got a lot of receivers to hit out there in Nature Field, Hampton being his favorite target thus far. But uh, it's just been fun to watch Chase Johnson evolve over the season as he continuously puts up numbers after number after number. At number four, it's Josh Green from White House. 13 of 18 for 204 yards, two touchdowns, and then he went and totaled the ball 23 times for 153 yards and one touchdown against uh, Hallsville last week. 163 yards in that 56-42 to win over Hallsville last week. He's just been the guy for them all year long. Uh, he's competed well. He's one of the best top, one of the best, uh, you know, arms in East Texas, and he also does it with his legs as well. So it's fun to watch Josh Green week in and week out for White House. And number three, Caden Dixon of center, 21 carries, 237 yards, and two touchdowns, in a massive 63 to 21 win over Van. Expected a lot more offense. Well, I'm sorry, not a lot more offense. I expected Van's defense to do a little bit better than what they did against Van uh, against Center last week. But that just shows you just how explosive Center is to take one of those games. I, I was completely wrong on. I thought Van would have won, but Center just too much. Rough Riders wins. At number two is Dawson Pendergrass at quarterback. He went five of nine for 153 yards and two touchdowns, and also ran the football 21 times. For 285 yards and five touchdowns on the ground. Seven touchdown night for Dawson Pendergrass as they went stupid on bottom. 68-20. to 20. Just an impressive game there for the Baylor commit. And at number one is Tyson Berry of Chapel Hill. Four carries, 85 yards, 
three touchdowns, three catches, 90 yards, one touchdown, 212 kickoff return yards, and two touchdowns, and a huge 79-45 to win over Lindell. Tyson is just incredible all over the place. He's in a slot. He's played defense in his career, running back in his career. He's just one of those guys that you got to get the ball to, and uh, that's what happened. The past Friday, he got the ball, and he took it to the house six different times last week. At the uh, and Now, let's get into the top 10 plays of the week. At number 10, we're going to start out here in Texarkana. It's David Potter. David Potter's going to throw this one up to Xavier Dangerfield as they connect on the deep ball against Marshall and score that one. 42-35 win for the Tigers. At number 9, it's uh, Connor Cuff. He's going to throw this one up to Braden Manning, beating the cover two, and then just runs right by the safety. Sai Yanara, big play there for Braden Manning. And look at the referee, stride for stride with him. Touchdown. At number eight, it is Bird Robinson of Marshall, the big fella. Big Bird, as they should call him. I don't know if that's his nickname, but that's a good one. The big sun gun runs down the sideline. Touchdown against Texas High in that close game. A loss for Marshall. At number seven, Roe Han Fluellen. It's the dot first from Caden Tennyson. Then it's two broken tackles. And then let's cut up against the world against that lead. Make that guy fall. And let's just go and waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Roe Han Fluellen. At number six, Chase Mosley, 271 rushing yards and a loss against White House. But here's 74 of those yards right there. That white boy is fast. Let's not play any games with him. Walk all the way to the end zone. Great play from Chase Mosley. And number five is Aaron Hampton. Aaron Hampton in this tunnel screen, cutting up on boys. Ooh, look at that stiffy. And let's just get down the sideline, scoring that touchdown. Big explosive play there. From Hampton, and we got one more a 67 yard punt return. He's gonna get that ball on the bounce, break a tackle, get through it, gets a great block there, and then he's just gonna skip through that lane. Play touchdown, great play from Aaron Hampton at number four. Josh Green, he's gonna throw this one up to the Carlton Wilson. Great throw, catches it, bounces off of two Bobcats, makes the last one miss, and that's a touchdown for Wilson. And number three is Demetrius Brisbane. And just watch this guy put on the show. He had three or four just plainly stupid electric runs for Chapel Hill past Friday against uh, Lindale. And just see this guy just light it up. I mean, that's another impressive run. And then here's the long one. Great block out wide from Kevian Huddleston, one of the top linemen in East Texas. And so you see Brisbane skating off of that block and scoring a touchdown. This last one's pretty good too. Uh, he's going to scramble around, doesn't see anything he likes. And then he's going to take his time getting down here. And then we're going to add 15 more. A frustration foul there against Lindale. At number two, Tyson Berry. This one is from 90, 94 yards. He's going to take this. Finds a seam. Great blocks there from the Chapel Hill kickoff return team. And he's going to get that way. Look at Deuce McGregor out there blocking for his boy, Tyson Berry. All the way into the end zone. Look at Coach Johnson on the sideline getting lit with him. And that number one play comes from Tadarian Boone. He's out here. Give me that ball. This jumps over the guy. Let's get down that sideline. L's up in the air. Touchdown. Along view. So let's look at. So let's take a look at the top ten most intriguing games of week uh, week nine, here we go. At number 10 is Timpson and Joaquin. Uh, Joaquin, I think, is a one-loss team going into this game. Uh, don't think they're going to compete with Timpson. Timpson has just got the super talented Terry Bussey, and that guy's just been incredible all year long. Haven't talked about Timpson in a while, so here's an opportunity to get those guys back in the limelight. I got Timpson winning big in this one just because somebody's going to have to show me they can beat him. At number nine is Mineola at Winsboro, and this is intriguing because Winsboro just took their first loss of the year against Pottsboro. Uh, they were up 18 going into the fourth or going in the third quarter. They had an 18-point lead, and they blew it. And so you, what does that do to a team? Does that derail them, or do they get back on tar on track, get back on target, and do they take it out on Mineola? Of course, Mineola is a team that can compete because they probably got the best player on the field in Dawson Pendergrass, who was playing quarterback for them, and is also just running it left, right, and up the middle on everybody. So it'll be interesting to see an intriguing style of, of football coming here. I got the Winsboro Raiders, though. 
uh, in a bounce back game against Mineola. At number eight, Kilgore at Athens. And this is just to see if Kilgore is just continue going to continue hitting a stride and, and, and going through the district the way that they have. Athens, to me, doesn't really pose a, a big threat to Kilgore, but it's just intriguing to see these teams that have been on a roll, uh, if they can continue to be on a roll. Isaiah Ross went for 100 again last week. He's just been incredible, as well as Van Zandt, who's been extremely efficient with the ball, not too many incompletions and a lot of touchdowns in about 225 yards almost every game. So Kilgore has been, been very consistent the last you know four or five weeks. Can they continue that trend against Athens? That's what's intriguing. And number seven, Chapel Hill at Henderson. Why is this intriguing? Not too much from Henderson's side point, but it's all about Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill has just been explosive here as the season has went on, especially as they got in the district. Uh, they started out slow against Palestine, but they still pouted on them at the end of the game. Uh, to, to roll off 32, I think it was 32-0 or something like that. That may have been Kilgore's score. But nonetheless, they they rolled against Palestine in the second half. They scored 60 in the game before last, and then they scored 79 freaking points against Lindale. Uh, uh, so I'm intrigued to see, can they keep going? Can they keep scoring basketball scores, man? They got the Jordan jerseys. Maybe they're going to go for 80 this week against Henderson. You just never know. Give me the Bulldogs. Big. At number six is Hallsville at Pine Tree. Hallsville coming off of a loss. They lost to White House, and then they lost to, uh, I think that's the only, yeah, they lost to, no, this is their only district. They lost to Texas High. So Texas High and White House, I think they're the only two games that, that Hallsville has lost in district. So they're still vying for a playoff spot. They're still trying to compete. It looks like Texas High, after their win against Marshall, is going to win this district. But Pine Tree, on the other hand, is trying to fight for a playoff spot, too. You know, they're coming into, uh, I think they're coming off of a bye. They've got one win, win in district against Nacogdoches, a team uh, that beat White House. So Pine Tree does have talent. They can formulate a plan. Jonathan Fuller out wide has been, out wide, has been doing some great things for them. So it's interesting to see. Give me the Bobcats and the potential – Top 10 player of the year, Chase Mosley. Uh, at number five, it's the, battle, it's the battle of two letters, PG at LE. Uh, Texarkana versus Texarkana right here. Caden McFadden, uh, the, I'll do everything for uh, PG. He plays a little slot back, plays, uh, catches the ball a little bit, plays a lot of defense for them. Going against LE and Jaden Hampton, the quarterback over there. Both of these teams are, are vying for the second and third place. Uh, well, this, this is pretty much the second and third place game of the district. Gilman's pretty much going to win the district after beating both of these teams. Uh, they're both 5-2 and two coming in this game. Very intriguing. Both in the same city. Uh, a lot of rivalry. Uh, this game was testy last year. Uh, I expect the same thing this year. I think uh, PG is probably going to win this game, but I'm not surprised with any result. But if I was betting, I'd have to go with PG. At number four is Palestine and Lindell. And the reason why this game is intriguing is because Lindell, this is a bounce back game. You know, they're probably trying to buy for a playoff spot here, either third or fourth place. Um, after just, you know, being shellacked by Kilgore and then being shellacked by Chapel Hill. And so now it's time to see, you know, how they're going to bounce back. Defensively, you know, They've been struggling this year, but Palestine hasn't shown the ability to score a bunch of points in a game. So maybe Lindell gets back on track here. I'm going with the Eagles in this one uh, as they try to fight for the third playoff spot here in this district. And number three is Tyler High at Lufkin. And this is uh, this is the old-time rivalry, man. This is that old East Texas uh, 5A division. We're only four schools, and they play each other twice. But Tyler High and Lufkin, these, none of these teams are what they were in the early 2000s, both on different ends of the, uh, of the power spectrum. But nonetheless, these are two talented teams, especially skill-wise, and they have the ability to put up points. They've both struggled this year. Uh, Lufkin put up 50 in their McKinney-North loss in overtime. Tyler High. Uh, they haven't been able to really just get the offense going, but they did win last week against uh, West Mesquite in a 21-0 game. So they played a lot of really good defense in that last game. Uh, it's gonna be a, a it's gonna be a battle for sure. I don't know who to go with. Uh, I'm probably gonna pick Lufkin here because they've shown the ability to be a little more explosive on offense with Braden Walker out wide and Kedron Young running that ball for Lufkin, but I, this could go in either way. But give me the pa Panthers here if I was placing a bet. At number two, it's McKinney North at Longview. Uh, why is this intriguing? Uh, because McKinney North beat us last year at their place. And if you know anything about Longview and if you know anything about, you know, that Lobo spirit, you know, we get to running back with a team that just beat us, say no more. At number one, 
a center at Carthage. Uh, and this game is very, 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 very explosive. That's not Jaden Walker, by the way. That's a Monty Cross there. I don't know why Jaden Walker's name is up there. But anyway, this game is going to be very uh, intriguing to me because of this, the offense that center possesses. You know, center can really do some great things on offense. They have been explosive all year long. They scored 63 points last week against a van defense that I thought would, you know, stop them a little bit. Uh, and, and it was just – it was not that center just scored left, right, left, right, left, right. Uh, Cross the quarterback, Caden Dixon, the running back, Jamal Evans. And then they've also got other targets out wide that can make plays. Number 10 out there just did a really fine job last week. Against the machine, the machine that is Carthage and the machine that, that pretty much handles business, especially in a regular season. Uh, you know, they went – Carthage made a statement last week against Rusk on the road, 49-0. to had no idea that they would play a game. Uh, the blow, a game would be such a blowout. But man, did they ever put it and pile it up on uh, on Rusk last week? Same thing uh, is going into this one. I'm very intrigued by it because center has offensive talent. They haven't shown to be able to stop many people this year, so I expect Carthage to score. But I think center has the ability to continue to score and keep up. So this is why it's the most intriguing game for me. It's Carthage at home. So, of course, I'm rolling with the machine that is Carthage, and I think that they're going to win it. But I do think this is the most intriguing game in these cases this week, just because center does have the ability to pile up some points in our earth. So with that being said, I'm up.